welcome uh, to this press uh, briefing. Uh, I'll be making two uh, press briefings in succession. Mm. The first press briefing pertains to the issues around the stabilization of the exchange rate and the control of inflation. The second press briefing pertains to the remuneration framework for the uh, condition, conditions of service, for the civil service. If we start with the issues uh, or measures, that were additional measures that government is taking uh, to stabilize the exchange rate and to control uh, inflation. The government has, has recently uh, taken significant steps to stabilize the exchange rate as announced through the presidential policy statement and other measures. The impact of these measures have, significant, have signaled to the market that government has a, a total commitment to enhancing the country's foreign exchange management systems. However, additional measures to further strengthen these systems and measures based on the following and well-established facts relating to the country are required. One, the key drivers of external instability to any economy are fiscal deficits and money, money, money creation by monetary authorities. These two variables have long been dealt with uh, successfully within our economy. In the sense that we have eliminated large deficits and we've also put, uh, put the, uh, the growth of money supply under control. Number two, in addition, the current account has moved from a deficit to a surplus position over the last three years. The trade balance has ceased to put, to put pressure on the exchange rate. Three, the economy is generating substantial foreign exchange uh, 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 at the moment, which is adequate to fund imports and other external payments. Four, the confidence deficit among economic agents as a result of past hyperinflation uh, experiences has resulted in a higher than usual demand for US dollars as a store of value. This is reflected not only in the increasing holdings of foreign currency balances in the banking system. Uh, these balances, however, do not efficiently circulate in the economy due to structural issues in the banking sector. The lack of confidence and high inflation expectations have, have incentivized economic agents to engage in power market benchmarking uh, in the, the pricing mechanism and in a skewed preference for US dollars for commercial transactions. And the forward exchange rate pricing is also the norm, thus creating a vicious cycle of increasing prices which is self-fulfilling and is generating higher month-on-month -month level of inflation as well as fueling adverse inflation expectations. The proof of this lies in a recent econometrics study done at the University of Zimbabwe, which indicates that inflation is not being caused by the, the normal real economic variables, but by behavioral variables such as confidence, uh, adverse uh, infl inflation expectations, uh, arbitrage, uh, uh, behavior and opportunities, among other things. Six, the skewed preference for the US dollars in the economy has also resulted in a larger than normal demand for foreign exchange to support domestic transactions as opposed to foreign exchange being a predominantly used to fund external transactions. I now proceed to pronounce the additional measures. Based on the above economic facts, the government has put in place the following additional measures uh, to build further confidence in the economy. One, entrenching the multi-currency system in law. The government has clearly stated this in its intention of maintaining a multi-currency system based on the dual use of the US dollar and the Zimbabwe dollar in the main. However, the market lacks confidence in the multi-currency system. Uh, in, in, however, let me check that. However, the market's le uh, lack of confidence in the multi-currency system uh, uh, is, is causing us challenges. And I want to assure you that uh, this multi-currency system is 
appeared to stay into the foreseeable future. And to eliminate any speculation and arbitrage-based uh, activities on this issue, the government has decided to embed the multi-currency system and, and continue to use it, uh, or, or to make sure that the, the US dollar is used in a, a, as a transaction currency in law for a period uh, that includes the five years that covers the NDS-1 period. So this will be in place for the entire NDS-1 period. Uh, number two, entrenching the interbank market exchange rate in law. The interbank market exchange rate is now being determined by banks on a willing buyer, willing seller basis. <coughs> Utilization uh, in all economic uh, transactions of this formal rate is now made uh, mandatory by law. While economic agents are free to price their goods in US dollars or Zimbabwe dollars, there, there are no price controls, as you know. Uh, uh, the equivalence of US dollar are, are, are price and Zimbabwe dollar prices for commodities should be strictly based on the current interbank exchange rate as determined by the willing buyer, willing seller rate. I move on to other stabilization measures pertaining to fuel, and maize meal, and bread in the shops. Let me start with the interventions in the fuel sector. Over the past few months, following significant pressure on global fuel prices due to global tensions, uh, has been, the government has been interven in, uh, intervening in the fuel sector in order to stabilize fuel prices. These actions have included the downward review of government levies on fuel, and number two, the release of fuel from the strategic fuel reserve. This week, the government completely removed the level on diesel, or rather brought it down to zero cents, and significantly dropped the levy on petrol. It's now down to 4.7 cents. Mm -hmm. This action prevented the price of fuel from breaching the two US, US dollars per liter mark. I now turn to the grain issue. The government is taking action to increase the supply of maize and wheat uh, into the market in order to ensure uh, a greater availability and price stability. And this is being done through releases from the strategic grain uh, reserve. Let me start with wheat. Government is, is, is going to immediately release 21,000 metric tons of, of wheat uh, over the next uh, one month to the millers. Uh, this is beginning in July. Uh, this will be done uh, in terms of pricing at the import parity, the uh, price calculated at the prevailing interbank rate or the willing buyer or willing seller rate. Miller, millers have also indicated to us as government that they will intend to import 70,000 metric tons of wheat uh, over a three month period. The wheat will be sold at the import parity price converted into local currency equivalent at the ruling exchange rate. And now turn to maize. Uh, again, government will immediately release 7,000 metric tons of maize, uh, which is, really, uh, uh, is an outstanding allocation to millers which they've already pay, paid for, but they were just delays in releasing due to some technical issues. But this will now be released immediately. That's 7,000 metric tons. In addition, government will release a further 25,000 metric tons of maize uh, on the back of a swap arrangement uh, with, with millers, uh, because they intend to import a similar amount over time. So, but we immediately give, hand, hand over 25,000 metric tons of millers to the process and satisfy the market. Thereafter, a further release of 27,000 metric tons of maize from the strategic grain reserve will also be made. Uh, this is at the ruling price of 75,000 dollars uh, per ton plus 90 US dollars per ton. And uh, this uh, 90 US dollars per ton is being converted at the prevailing interbank rate. Let me make further observations. It has been noted that uh, millers, or some millers, uh, tend to put the burden uh, on government to replenish their grain stocks. 
While we appreciate the importance of ensuring food security to the nation, millers should be encouraged to source their own grain stocks uh, uh, whenever possible. We encourage them to do that. We've given the licenses to import freely, and they should be able to, to do that. But that said, the government will expedite importation of maize from the region to make sure that we have enough stocks to uh, supply to our citizens. The government of, the, of Zimbabwe remains committed uh, to maintaining macroeconomic stability and the elimination of harmful and destabilizing arbitrage conditions that have pervaded the economy at the expense of the generality of citizens. I thank you. Uh, uh, colleagues, uh, thank you for listening to that first uh, uh, statement. I now proceed to give a statement regarding a uh, review of civil servants' salaries, both monetary and non-monetary benefits uh, included. The government of Zimbabwe recognizes the and appreciates the tireless work and unwavering commitment to duty by all civil servants across the three arms of the state, namely the executive, which is all government, the legislature, which is parliament, and the judiciary, including grant-aided entities, agencies, and independent uh, commissions. To this end, the government has been, has been closely monitoring developments in the macroeconomy with a view to ensuring that exogenous shocks from adverse macroeconomic developments do not seriously erode the purchasing power of civil servant salaries. As such, government has been reviewing the cash and non-cash benefits uh, or monetary and non-monetary benefits of civil servants uh, as, as follows. I will start with the executive. Just recently, the government announced that civil servants' uh, base salaries have been increased by 100% with effect from 1 July 2022, and that negotiations are continuing through the National Joint Negotiating Committee, NJNC, platform to come up with additional uh, uh, salary um, uh, measures uh, for, uh, uh, for all our civil servants. In addition, serving members of the civil service have the following benefits. A, a housing loan guarantee scheme, that's the one. Two, civil service housing loan scheme. Three, uh, there's access to the duty-free importation for single motor vehicle uh, for personal use by any civil servant. I wanted to highlight those three non-mandatory benefits. Let me turn specifically to the health sector. With particular regard to the health services sector, the government has reviewed with immediate effect upwards the health sector specific allowances in the following areas. One, uh, we've increased the on-call allowances which apply to doctors and laboratory scientists. Two, we've increased the night duty and standby or call out allowances which apply to nurses, nurse aides, and general hands uh, in theater. Three, we immediately increased the nurse manager's allowances. Four, we've increased the special health equalization factor, which applies to all eligible staff. And then uh, five, uh, uh, also we've increased the COVID and infectious disease risk allowances. In addition, the government has reviewed the non-monetary benefits for the health sector uh, in the following ways. One, the provision of institutional housing for health workers, starting with our big centers, mainly Harare and Bulawayo, but then proceeding and expanding into the other uh, geographical areas. Two, the provision of housing loan guarantees. Three, provision of efficient transport facilities, starting with our referral or central hospitals, including the sixth hospital at the select. Addressing uh, deficiencies in the cafeteria system and reoperationalizing this system is also another action that we're taking as government. Including, uh, also we include the local production and sourcing of uniforms for health sector personnel. So that's what we, the action we have taken immediately 
to give relief but also support to our health sector employees as government. And now turn to the teachers. Uh, I've talked about humanity benefits, the 100% increase in salaries beginning 1st of July 2022. In addition, the other benefits, uh, some of them are quasi monetary some of them are non-monetary. This is the restoration of the Advancement Awards. That's the first benefit. The two, the payment of performance awards, which had been withheld due to financial constraints in the past, which have, uh, these have been restored, and these will now be processed with the effect from 1st of July 2022. For this purpose, members will now be placed on their correct employment grades. Three, the repayment of school fees for up to three biological children the teaching family. This benefit applies to teachers and payment will make directly to the schools and will be up to a prescribed limit per biological uh, child. Currently, this limit is set at $20,000 per child per term and treasury is ready to disperse the required amount for the first term. Four, the provision of 34,000 housing units as institutional accommodation for teachers. To cushion teachers from the rising cost of accommodation, government has committed itself to provide 34,000 housing units within and outside school premises uh, over a period of five years. Finally, the provision of transport facilities to ferry teachers of both rural and urban areas uh, uh, is being uh, implemented and has already commenced. This is facilitated by existing structures under the civil service bus fund and the rural and urban mass transport assistance. I now want to highlight the security sector. Government values the critical role played by the security services in the, in the country and in, the, in our economy. We do not have economic growth without the requisite peace. Substantial progress has been made in ensuring competitive remuneration and general improvement in the conditions of service for members uh, of the security sector. I want to highlight the four areas where government is trying to make some improvements. One, government has introduced the military salary concept and its equivalent across the entire security cluster and that covers various categories of benefits. In addition, the government has accelerated the acquisition of operational vehicles targeting <coughs> management within the security cluster. Three, the government is also instituting uh, immediate measures to increase access to institutional housing and transportation for serving members of the security services. Four, the security services sector also has access to housing loan guarantee uh, schemes to enable members to purchase houses in the areas of their choice under the framework being finalized by the, uh, the service commissions and the respective uh, and the respective uh, participating financial institutions uh, to this scheme. Let me further highlight the provision of housing loan guarantee schemes for home ownership across the entire civil service. The Public Service Commission is collaborating with the Ministry of National Housing and Social Amenities use of local government and public works and treasury uh, 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 to work towards the facilitation of the housing loan guarantee facility for civil service, under which the government will be the guarantor of housing mortgages applied by, uh, uh, by members, applied for by members through the identified networks of banks. Consultations between relevant stakeholders uh, have already begun and have been initiated being initiated by the Public Service Commission. I also want to further highlight the payment, or continued payment, of the uh, 75 US dollars COVID-19 allowance. Recognizing the significant risk factors faced by civil servants who are mostly frontline workers, government introduced the 75 US dollars per month uh, as a COVID risk allowance. This amount is still uh, payable in foreign currency and will continue to be paid for the foreseeable future. I now turn to the 100 US dollars uh, cushioning allowance uh, which we introduced uh, three months ago. Recognizing the inflationary pressures faced by public 
sector workers in the face of adverse macroeconomic developments and the impact of dual currency pricing. Government introduced a hundred US dollars per month and a cushioning allowance payable in foreign currency. This allowance also continues to be paid and will uh, uh, pay, will be will subsist for the foreseeable future. That was uh, uh, basically a monument, uh, monetary benefits, non-monetary benefits pertaining to the uh, executive arm of the state or of government. And now turn to the legislature, which is parliament. Parliamentarians and staff of Parliament, uh, the Parliament of Zimbabwe, have also had various uh, reviews implemented across both salary and non-cash benefits as follows. And this is with immediate effect. One, salaries have been increased by at least 100% with effect from 1 July 2022. Sitting allowances have also been similarly increased with immediate effect. Government has also in introduced with immediate effect a contributory medical scheme where government will contribute 80% to the subscriptions, uh, similar to the scheme which is in place for the rest of the civil service. Four, government has introduced a duty free importation allowance for a second, a second motor vehicle for use by parliamentarians in their public service work. Uh, five, in order to ease transport challenges uh, for employees, government acquired buses for use by parliament staff. Six, in the spirit of leaving no one and no place behind in public engagement, government has intro recently introduced a constituency visit allowance to improve close relations between elected officials and their constituents and electorate. Fuel is provided to members in all constituencies irrespective of the distance to their constituencies from the capital city. And this is also in proportion to the size of their constituency. So the larger the constituency, the higher the fuel allocation. Because there's a lot more area to cover. Finally, members of the legislature are also being paid the combined 175 US dollars per month, uh, which comprises the 75 US dollars uh, linked to the uh, COVID risks, and then the 100 US dollars uh, cushioning allowance recently uh, introduced. Finally, I turn to the judiciary, the third arm of the state. All members of the judiciary have received a salary increase of a minimum 100% uh, uh, with effect from 1 July 2022. In addition, an allowance that recognizes and aligns remuneration with peers in the legal project profession has also been put in place. Number two, members of the judiciary are now also benefiting from the housing loan guarantee schemes and the housing loan scheme, as well as the duty-free importation uh, of one uh, motor vehicle. Number three, members of the judiciary also being paid the combined 175 US dollars per month, comprising the COVID-19 allowance of 75 US dollars, and then the, the plus the 100 US dollars cushioning allowance. In conclusion, colleagues, therefore, the government of Zimbabwe reiterates its commitment to pay competitive remuneration to civil servants and to all arms of the state in order to retain critical skills and derive efficient uh, uh, public services. Accordingly, the government will continue to assess conditions of, of service for all civil servants across the entire state in order to uh, appropriately and timelessly benchmark these in line with economic developments. I thank you.